Last last time, the Kayla rips Savannah Sydney win by Michelle Marie Dwayne, copyright 2020. Our story begins after Bikela went on a war chief Savannah's West Commission. After Bikela discovered the mission was a suicide mission to rescue several board members, one of the people they were to rescue refused to return to the group, as he told Bikela, This is not the horror that I grew up in belief. Bikela herself could not disagree. As she herself denied Savannah's, or what she saw was happening to Uru Grimar, or the Horde itself. The torment of finally expressed her personal hatred of Savannah's, Mikhail wants the office of Savannah to express her feelings. Mikhail looked around Uru Grimar and the dingy brown buildings with their spikes and ugly architecture. Uru Grimar, as far as she was concerned, was a slum, whereas Quasalas, also known as Silvermoon, was beautifully built a city that had been ransacked by the Scourge. Ironically, the Scourge was led no other than, than Savannah's Windrunner, who later moved in with her husband, the Forsaken. Ever since Bikela was in elementary school, she heard the history of Savannah's and the Forsaken, she always had an axe to grind over what happened over 300 years ago. The Cinderai have long lives. Many live to be 500 years or longer. Some have even lived to be a thousand years old. Ever since Bikela was 75, she so much wanted to find Savannah's and determine if she was, as the history teacher had said of her, Bikela knocked on the board chief's door. A heavy wooden door that was made her knock seem muffled in the thick wood. Savannah answered the door. Who are you and what do you want? Mikhail looked at Savannah with disgust. We need to talk. Mikhail pushed by Savannah as she walked over to the desk, a desk covered with grime and paperwork. Savannah was not at all happy to be manipulated by someone she did not know, walked over to Michaela and blocked her from sitting down. How dare you just walk into my office? Who are you? Quietly, she thought of how this Cinderai looked familiar. She had seen this woman before. She just was unsure where she had. I was one of the people that went on that fool's errand to Stormwind to rescue the Horde prisoners. I also deliver Elyria's reckless necklace to you at Undercity. Oh, yes. I remember now. How come you come back and none of the others did? I kill angry. You did not think I could figure out what you had in mind? Every time... I made a mistake. I had to repeat the journey until I got it right. Or I could drink that nasty little potion of yours to quit. I used my hearthstone as a last resort. After every other technique to get around, the storm wind guards failed. That potion would have turned me into another of your scourge. I would not drink it, yet you limited my ability to just die and start over. My heart don't work, and that is how I am here. Savannah began to think how she could make it even more difficult for future missions. I need to disable hearthstones. How could I have forgotten that? Oh, thanks for the tip. I will remember that for the next mission. Bikela looked at Savannah with pure anger as she grabbed her by the speck of her neck. She hissed angrily, There will not be a next time. Bikela threw Savannah against the wall. Savannah was pinned down by Bikela. Bikela had her against the wall like a vice. Savannah tried to use her evil eye to hypnotize Bikela. Bikela gave her her own version. And she tightened the grip on Savannah's wrist. Savannah cried in pain as she could hear the crunching of the bones in her wrist. 
getting this. How many others have you done this to? The killer slammed the crushed wrist against the wall. Savannah's getting pain. Many. Only you came back. How many? Why? Savannah's wrist in pain. Her wrists were crushed. The killer slammed her against the wall. Her skull made a hard crunching against the reinforced adobe wall. A Savannah's fought to remain conscious. She was quickly losing her control. Please, stop. I will tell you. The killer looked at the oldest cinderite with disgust. And she led her to a chair and slammed her into it. Do anything against me and you will never leave this room alive. Savannah winced as she felt her broken bones and her wrists. She knew that her days of using dark magic were long gone. If she was lucky, she could get a forso forsaken bone repair to restore some of the wrist mobility. Looking at kill a tall red-headed cinder eye, fuming at her, she quickly tried to read Bikila's mind, only to find a strong force that kept her out. The same type of force that her sister Elaria discovered when she was exiled from Sever Moon for doing void magic. This was a Shadow Priest, and they could totally turn your mind into ooze. Most Shadow Priests were not physically strong, yet feeling her broken wrist... This was like no other Shadow Priest she knew. Savannah was facing a threat that she could not subdue by magic. With the sheer pain of her broken wrists and cracked skull, she could not physically work a spell to defeat her, defend herself. Yes, it was a total to make you give up and drink the potion. Which would have turned you into a forsaken. After you drink, you pass out, and our mage will retrieve your body, and you would be in Undercity as a new resident. What gives you the right to determine who will be forsaken? I have worked my whole life in honor of the Horde. I have served on the Garrosh. I have pledged my allegiance to the Horde and Quathalas. I have a home on Draenor. That word prisoner was right. I do not serve you, nor will I ever serve you again. You have corrupted by evil. You are a shame to the cinder eye and the horde. The killer spat in the eyes of Savannah and sent her a strong dose of shadow word pain. Savannah screamed in agony. The killer turned back to the writhing woman sitting in their chair. I am leaving the Horde, and I will take Quathalas with me. Cross me again, and you will never recover, as I will destroy your sick mind in minutes. You have dishonored the Horde, and have made an enemy today. The killer stormed out of the office, and slammed the heavy door behind her with a solid reverberating thud, leaving a broken savannah writhing in pain. Savannah slowly got up. She was too weak and crashed to the floor. Her secretary came rushing in, horrified to find his war chief in the state. What happened? Savannah winced in pain as she struggled to regain what happened. Explain what happened. Her secretary quickly helped her up, gently helped her up, and summoned a healer. As they waited for the healer, to arrive, she gave him the full story. He nodded as he was unsure if she should ever cross paths with the killer again. This the killer sounds like she clearly has her own axe to grind. You are, unfortunately, the axe. I would advise you to avoid this woman. He wiped blood from Savannah's head wound. Savannah groaned as he applied a salve to the wound. She has said that she will take Quathalas with her and fight against me. Ow! That hurts! Don't! Touch my wrist! 
I'm sorry, but I need to examine them. Clearly, this woman was of great strength. I do not know if a healer can fully repair them. Savannah was at a loss. For the first time in her long life, she was unable to defend, defeat an enemy. The killer was an enemy of another type. She was not a demon or a boss. She was angry Cinderai. What surprised her was that even though Vikela was a shadow priest, she did not just outright kill her. Vikela made her physically hurt and left her in that sorry state when she walked out. If Quathlas decides to leave the Horde, so many Cinderai would leave the Horde forces. This would totally destabilize the Horde and her plans of domination of Azeroth. Quietly, she looked at the concerned secretary. Find out what you can about this Bikela. I want to know as much of her as I can. I will find out as much as I can. It will take me some time, however. He went to answer the door to usher in Savannah's personal healer, a forsaken medic. He looked at her wrist with a shrug as he began to perform a healing procedure. Sadly, it was not going well. After many attempts, he sighed and gave her the bad news. I'm sorry, I can't repair this. I have tried many times. The damage is too great. I can give some limited mobility back, but you will never have. The same ability. The good news is the skull fracture is easily repaired. Savannah winced. She had tried to move her hands as she would to do spells. They would not move to the proper positions. Savannah, I cannot ease my hands on spells. That vixen took that away from me. She has taken my magic from me. Damn her to the ma. Damn her to the Arkness. Samantha jumped out of her chair, only her sudden movement caused her knees to buckle as she slammed into the side of the desk. Her knees smacked into the floor with a heavy crunch. Her healer was already starting to heal the damaged knees as he and her secretary put her back in the chair. You got enough problems. I don't need you to injure yourself further. You just cracked your kneecaps. I have fixed them for now, but the damage will take time to heal. You need to rest a few days. He told the secretary to arrange for a gurney to get Savannah back to Undercity. Carefully, they put her on a gurney and created a portal to bring her home. 